this is terrible for me. I need to stay close to the mic. I usually do a lot of gesture. I walk a lot, so it's good that I don't have a lot of things to type on the laptop. So my name is Frederick Harper. Uh, you can call me Fred if it's easier. Uh, I'm from Montreal. You already noticed my beautiful accent. Uh, now with the well, now with the latest election, I'm kind of screwed because I always started my uh, presentation about like, hey, my name is Frederick Harper, not like the person you're thinking about right now. So I think I can still do that joke for a couple of weeks, but uh, hopefully we're gonna, hopefully we're gonna forget this guy really soon. <laughs> so <laughs> feel free to tweet uh, during the presentation using at F Harper for stuff you like, stuff you don't like. Can you hear me? Okay. Is it okay? I usually don't need a mic, but now for the recording, uh, is it good? Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I'm a senior technical evangelist at Immunio, and uh, we are in the security space. Uh, I'm not a security guy, so that's going to be an interesting talk. Uh, the slides and the recording uh, is going to be online on the uh, PyCon website, but I'm also going to put this on my blog, so uh, feel free to go see after the link will be there. So. The talk today is, is your Python application secure? So raise your hand, is security for your application important? Those the people that did not raise their hand are just still sleeping or didn't think that security is not important. You can just walk and, and go out from the room. It's OK, it's OK. Uh, usually people raise their hand. It's, it's quite important. but. Uh, do you have time to think about security when you're creating your application, when you're having features? Let's be honest. Do you really take the time? Do you really have the time? I would assume that in your head you said no. Is it the case? Do you have the expertise? Is there any security expert in the room? Awesome. <laughs> Nobody. So I'm going to look credible in front of you guys. So uh, you may not have the expertise. And you may not have the money. Like hiring security expert is the best way uh, that can help you to have your web application secure. But it costs a lot of money. Like hiring any other expert, it's not because they're like more expensive than anyone else. You need to pay for expertise. You need to pay for experience. But at the end of the day, did you ever ask yourself that question? Is your application that secure? Before being an evangelist, I was a developer for like ten years, and I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but I never asked myself that question. Is my application secure? Maybe I was a shitty developer. Maybe that's true. But uh, I talked to a couple of developers when I started to like uh, enter the security space, and, and mostly everybody that were either honest enough or drunk enough told me that, hey, no. I never really thought about, like, is my application secure enough? And it's not about like, hey, maybe I know the best practices. Maybe I have some skills, some expertise in security. But uh, maybe I'm stuck with those legacy application with those spaghetti code or like uh, application you built like five years ago that you're kind of like annoyed that you did it, uh, code and, and, or just application that it's working. You don't know how, but it's like critical for your business and you just don't want to touch that code. But that code may have like security issues, may have vulnerabilities. And I totally know it's a WordPress slide in a Python conference, but bear with me. I wanted to talk just a little bit about a small story that happened to me. I used to have my blog on WordPress. And uh, WordPress is quite popular out there. They, they have like the most uh, number of websites running on WordPress in the world. It's, it's a stats, it's there. <coughs> And uh, at some point, my blog was super slow. I was like, OK, my host, uh, maybe there's something on the server. Maybe it, it's one of those plugins that I put because I'm, la I'm too lazy to create my stuff myself. I'm just using plugins. And I was like, it's slow. There's something happening. And I went to the log file. And I saw a lot of people, a lot of people trying to access my blog, brute forcing, trying some like uh, usual username and password. I was like, what the hell? My blog is not even popular. Like, I'm not New York Times, I'm not CBC, I'm not like, name it. Uh, I'm not Diverge, I'm not, like, my blog is a small <coughs> piece on the web. And I was like, why people are doing this? Kids having fun, some people trying to get free access to my host, to like host FTP, or just put malware, anything. 
The truth is, it's happening right now, and it's probably happening to your web application right now, and you don't even know it. You have to remember you that story. No matter if you like the idea or no, no matter if your name got out or no, uh, it, it was a real sad story. Uh, not even about like the people that tried to cheat on their wife or husband. It's more about like some people that, that ruined their life. We can, it's another discussion, we can argue if they, if they did a great thing or, or a bad thing, but some people just committed suicide because their name got out. Some people lost their job, lost their family, and believe it or not, this company is done. They still try to recruit new members. Unless you were hiding under a rock for the last couple of months, there is no way you're going to subscribe to that site to try to cheat your wife and husband if you do this. It's another story. But like that company is done. Or at least that website, that product is done. So it's critical. And it may happen to you tomorrow. The thing is that I don't want to scare you. And if it's what I did for the first five minutes of my talk, uh, I tell you, I'm not a security expert, funny enough. I'm a developer, uh, a technical evangelist who got interested in security. And my goal today is not to make everybody expert in the room. My goal today is to make you think a little more about security when you build your Python application. To include this in your process. To know that there is things happening that you may not even know before. Or even if you've known about those issues, you did not realize that, hey, it may happen to me. What happened tomorrow if someone hacked your web application, got into your database, get customers' information, wipe your database, wipe any data, just uh, like give a bad experience to your user when they go to your website? What's going to happen? <coughs> maybe no more job, maybe no more company, maybe your application is done. And I'm kind of like negative this morning, it's because I didn't drink my coffee. But at the end of the day, it's reality, that may happen. So let's see some of those like most popular or important traits when it comes to security. So do you know where that code <coughs> comes from? No. Maybe I'm too old. Like it's coming from Hackers, the movie. It's a really whole movie. I thought that it was make sense like security hacker movie. And no? Okay. Toronto folks. So <laughs> if you, uh, there is a small organization called OWASP. Uh, this is the Open Web Application Security Project. Basically, it's a, there is chapter everywhere. There is one in Toronto, one in Montreal. There's one everywhere. And their goal is, for, is to try to make a little more mainstream security, but also uh, to help people, help developers, help DevOps to just have best practices. And they have a top 10 in really like two, three years. And, and one of the most important uh, three that comes to the top of the list all the time is SQL injection. So those of you that laugh, either you read the XKCD comic or you just don't like my beard. But if you read the XKCD comic, <laughs> it's quite funny. And uh, this is basically what is a SQL injection. So it's a way for attackers to modify this, the structure of a SQL statements, a queries, to either get more data than they should or to alter some data inside your application. And now you're going to tell me, Fred, like, they don't have access to my code. They cannot like, really play with my SQL statements. And there is a lot of chances that you use databases. But it can. There is a way to do this. Let me show you one example. So if I go to that website, uh, obviously, this website is not uh, a good practices, so there is some issue in that website. But I know that, uh, what is the username? I always forgot. It's a trader. So I know that username. It's trader at bank.com. But uh, for whatever reason, like I saw someone trying to log in, maybe it's mine, and I just want to have fun, and I don't remember the password. So I try trader and say, no, it's not a working story, uh, wrong password. But I try again. I say, OK. Uh, before contacting support to try to get a password, let's try Trader with a simple quote. Just see what's going to happen. Like, is there like is the person taking the password to create the, the SQL query to have to the database if the password is right? And if I try to log in, I'm going to have an error on the server. That means that somewhere, someone did not escape my simple quote and my password. So if I go back to logged in, and what I'm going to try this time. 
that's the thing, .com. I'm not even going to put a password. Let me show you what I'm going to put. This is big enough, yeah. Okay, let me show you what I'm going to put in the password. I'm going to put this. And for those of you that did some SQL, no matter the where cloud, 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 thank you. No matter that thing that you have in the SQL statement, if I put a or, or, oh my god, <laughs> one equal one, my SQL statement will be true, no matter else, no matter what happened. So because I have an intuition that this application let me do this because I had an error when I put a sample quote, let me put in the password, this text only, and I'm going to be able to log in, even without the right password. <clears throat> and trust me, once you know this, you're going to try this on every website that you know. <laughs> Most of them, it won't work. But the idea here is to show you that it's quite easy in some application to do SQL injection. And that one is give me access to some personal information without even knowing the password. And now you look, some of you look at me and say, Fred, you're a bastard. I'm like, I, I don't do this. I'm a good coder. Great. But you may use like framework. You may use libraries. You may have those legacy application. There is a lot of ways to do SQL injection. And this is one of the ways. So I got access to a website without even knowing the password. Is it frightening? Yes? We should do a trailer. Okay. Uh, I'm a little bit too uh, joyful for a Saturday morning. Uh, the second most popular, and I, I, I hate using the word popular because that makes them famous, but it, the most important one is uh, cross-site scripting. That you may have heard uh, under the name uh, XSS. So basically, it's the same kind of attack. It's an injection type of attack where I can use JavaScript to run a specific or, or, or like a specific code on your customer's uh, browser. And there is different ways that I'm going to be able to, uh, or different type of attacks that I'm going to be able to do with XSS. I'm going to be able to hijack some session. I'm going to be able to access some uh, personal information or get privileged access or even trying to do some exploit in the browser. Uh, that happened to me recently when I was going on all the web pages in my browser in one tab, and I had some ads in all websites, even on websites where I know that I should not have any ads. It's because one website somewhere, like I had a, a XSS like uh, attack on one of the websites where, that was super clear. So I have an, an XSS attack in one of the websites, and they were able to put some JavaScript inside the website without me knowing it. So uh, it's also quite easy because most of the time we don't escape what's coming from the user. So if I go to that website, the most beautiful website you ever see, ever. I didn't make it. So I have a search box and I know that in that search box, uh, how the developer made it is that it's just gonna display me my search term, which makes sense. Well, hey, trying to look for that term, uh, th this is what we found in the database. So I'm just gonna put a script tag, alert, the most terrifying JavaScript code ever. And what's gonna happen? Like the page is like executing my JavaScript right now. Let's agree again, it's not the most terrible thing that could happen to your website, but still, there is some annoying pop-up at some point, and depending on the browser, like Chrome is kind of great, you can say prevent, stop the, that annoying pop-up. But I did, not, I did not even play in the code. I'm not the developer of that application, and I was able to inject some JavaScript inside the application from something super trivial, the search box. It's because the developer make a perfect working code, like, hey, you enter a term, I'm going to search, and I'm going to display that search term in my web page. But I was able to inject some JavaScript without you knowing it, because it's happening on uh, the client side. But even better, I saw some application where uh, there is no validation made uh, when you create a user account. So I can create my user account, put in my first name, some JavaScript code, and every time you're going to try to display my first name, the browser is going to execute my JavaScript. So it's the second, it doesn't look like this with an alert box, but it's the second most important treat on web application. And this one is good for no matter the technology you use. We're talking about Python here. 
you probably have a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in your code. So you, your application is vulnerable to that type of threat. And the third one is remove common execution. And that happened more often than you think. And this one is, is very scary. Uh, the first one was like, hey, I can access your data. It's, it's kind of annoying uh, because you can wipe, you can alter data, you can get information that you should not have access to. XSS is the kind of same thing. You can get access where you should not have access. But the third one can give you me access to uh, the shell. I don't know for you. I don't want people to have access to uh, shell command execution because you basically got access to my server and maybe application, other application and other properties and maybe of even other customers on the same server depending on how the infrastructure is done. So this one is quite critical and that happened quite often because we're gonna use Evo, we're gonna use exec, we're gonna use a lot of common that are there to help us as developer to create our application. But at the end of the day, we can open the door to some attackers, to some hackers. And those are the three most popular, the three most important. But there is a lot more. Brute force attack, common username. How often I see an application and the, the default logging for the admin panel is admin, admin. Like, seriously? Admin, admin. It's so easy. How often are you going to try to like help your customer, your user, to put a, a more complex password, but it's still going to put something like, I love pizza, or uh, my name is Fred, or I'm going to put my birth date. And all those things uh, give access to uh, your application more easily than you think. Uh, session farming, session hijacking, uh, c surf tampering. I'm going to try to log in, log out, log in, log out, log in, log out from your application to try to get information coming in, uh, like information on a cookie. You're going to create information about your sessions, trying to find a pattern, being able to create my access myself. Uh, excessive, excessive 400 and 500. You maintain that it's quite trivial, but there is someone somewhere running a scanner and trying to find the typical web page using with that framework or the typical uh, access page or handling page used with that CMS. And sometimes it's just about also file authorization. I saw a couple of websites where uh, to access the admin panel where you get all the like protected information, you need to enter your username and password. You get on the login page, enter your username and password. If it's wrong, you don't have access. If it's right, you have access. Congrats, the information is there. If you access the pad directly, you get access to the information because there is no protection on the server. There is no access control on the server. So there is a lot more out there. Unfortunately, I already have to cut in half my presentation because I realized this morning I only have 30 minutes. But go on Google, go on whole apps, you're going to see a lot of those. So there is one rule. Uh, one rule, and, and it's not coming from me, obviously. I would have liked to uh, say something brilliant like this. I found this somewhere. Uh, anything coming from the user is unsafe. So, well, think about this. <laughs> Everything coming from the user may not be safe. So if you're taking information from a form, from a search box, upload files, do some verification, sanitize information, escape, do whatever you can to be sure that what's coming inside your application, think about it. You're taking something externally and you're taking it in your application. So do what you need to do to make sure that uh, that information is working. Uh, it's going to be great. There is a, a, a special option, uh, shell, equal true, uh, shell equal true, that you may have used. Uh, it's easier sometimes to run a specific application on the shell. And uh, it, it's great for application, but what you do when you do this is that your uh, common is going to be executed in the shell. So you get access to uh, any other shell-based features. By default, I think, uh, the shell is at false, but you're going to see a lot, if you're the kind of like copy and paste stack overflow type of developer, and I'm not putting a judgment here, but it had happened quite often, we're looking for a way to fix an issue, we go on stack overflow, oh, someone put a code, oh, it seems to work, copy and paste, working application, done, I fixed my issue. I saw a lot of shell uh, equal true because it's just easier to make it happen sometimes. But when you do this, that's going to be easier for me to add a pipe to your comment and do like harem.rf on your uh, home directory. And if I have the access, bam, you're done. I wipe your uh, server. So uh, if you do this, try to uh, escape. 
maybe what's coming from the user. In that case, I try to list a directory, like you can see my Python skills, it's like super complex code. What I use, I use the quote function, simple function that not a lot of people use. Uh, that's just going to put some quote around uh, that variable, around that text, and, and I'm going to be able to escape. So instead of trying to list some file, that's going to be able to remove my home. I'm just going to try to list a file that uh, probably does not exist. So worst case, uh, I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do, but that hacker, that cracker, whatever you call it, that hacker is not going to be able to do bad thing on your server. Same thing, try to escape anything you can. Like everything coming from the user, don't trust it. Uh, Flask will do some, jo some job for you. There is some framework out there. At the beginning I was saying, or I thought that I said that like you're quite depending about frameworks and, and libraries. Uh, if there's security issues within those libraries, you're stuck with those. But at the end of the day, they also do a tremendous work to be sure that they fix most of the security issues. So use framework uh, with Flask, there's templates. It's a lot more work. Uh, we can argue about pro and cons, but uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the template is going to do some work from you. They're going to try to escape some uh, input from your user to be sure that it's going to be the safer that you can. Try to sanitize some of your code. Uh, the most important part when you try to access the database, uh, don't use uh, the unsafe example of anything. Just try to uh, use the execute command with the uh, parameters. And the placeholder is going to change depending. This one is for MySQL, and I think it's great for PostgreSQL uh, also. But by doing this, it's not a lot more work. Don't tell me like that's going to change all your day of work by doing this. But you may solve a lot of possible issues. This one is uh, a great discussion we, ha we can have. There's a lot of like OEM uh, people pro and cons again that can slow down, that can that can slow down your process, that can. Uh, that can remove your dependencies around the database. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you use uh, ORM, the Object <laughs> Rational ma mapper, mapper, you're going to be able, again, uh, the ORM is going to do some work for you to escape some uh, parameters or some uh, variable coming from the user, or no matter where it's coming. Avoid exact, if possible, because again, uh, I'm going to be able to execute any other type of command. And you're going to probably give access to uh, your uh, shell command execution to uh, the hacker. So uh, again, it seems like a basic stuff. But trust me, when you look just uh, a little bit online and you try to find some tutorials about Python, you go on Stack Overflow, you're going to see a lot of those. And, and I don't think it's because people want to like just open security all in their applications. It's just you don't know what could happen with those things. And you just think, oh, it's working. It makes sense for me. Nobody's going to try to attack my application, but that happened. So there is a lot of ORM libraries out there. Uh, I did not try any of those, so I cannot like say, hey, use that one or use the other one. Uh, but this is, a, this is a great option. There is a great option for you. Now with XSS, there's a lot of way in your code you can try to fix your code or at least prevent uh, injection of JavaScript. So if you go, oh, if you go on a WASP and you look at the documentation, this is all the tricks you can get. So right now after the presentation, you go on that page and you learn everything. <laughs> Make sense? No. So there is a lot of things you can do. But uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of tools that can help you without you directly using best practices. You can use static code analysis. There is some pro and con to do this. And there is not a lot for Python. Like there's PyLand, but it's not doing a lot of things around security. XSS, uh, XSS Crappy is an open source one. If I run this on the previous uh, website, it's going to crawl all the website, trying to find all the possible SQL injection or XSS. And it's going to create for me a report with all the possible flaws that I have in my application with where I can fix this. So that can help me. And there's a couple of scanners out there. The issues with anything related to security is that most of the time it's not free. Uh, there's a lot of open source software. Most of the time you're going to have to pay for it. But at the end of the day, it's for uh, the security of your application and your user. So it may worth the price. And there is something new and cool called RASP, uh, Runtime Application Self-Protection. It's basically protection that you have directly to your application that's going to protect you on a runtime. 
uh, either by hacking a library and most of the time they're going to do monkey patching. This is what we do at Immunio, but it's not a product kit. I don't want to go too far in this. You had that library to Python and uh, you're good to go. You get detection, but you also get reporting right inside your application. So that can prevent any issues that you're going to have on runtime. And there is a other little small trick uh, that seems to be like default and truest type of things, but trust me, uh, and, and you probably read that slide and say, oh my God, there is some stuff that I'm just not doing myself. So think about like never store, please stop doing this, store a uh, clear password in the database, uh, stop, please. Okay, let's agree on one thing, stop to do this. And, and don't use MD5, it's kind of like a little bit shit. Uh, uh, use like uh, cryptographically, uh, slow hash function, uh, put HTTPS, talk with your DevOps. There's a lot of things that could happen on the server that gonna profit you as a developer. So there is a lot of things. Uh, I'm running out of time. Again, people that know you know that I talk a lot. Don't smile. Uh, so there's a lot of things. I may start a blog post series about small tips and tricks about security because I only have 30 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna put those online. Uh, the thing is that some of you uh, look at me and say, thanks friend, you just lost 30 minutes of my life. And uh, no, <laughs> it's not a case. So please stop uh, uh, fighting against what I just said. Uh, just accept the fact that we don't take enough time to secure your application, accept the fact. And I'm really serious now, kind of like go back home, go back to the office, had in your uh, development life cycle, had security. It's not an abstract talk. It's super, super important. Read about the best practices, scan your code, use tools, talk to the expert, and, and just try to do better code right now before it's too late. What, what is the uh, idiom? It's like uh, uh, better safe than sorry. So better safe than sorry when it comes to security. But remember, nothing is 100% bulletproof. Superman is the, like, the best example. There's Kryptonite. So, uh, that any best practices, any tools you're gonna use will never product you 100%, not even the software working on. Uh, but the more best practices you're gonna use, the more software tool like WAF, uh, like some firewall, some high PS, everything you're gonna do is gonna put you one step closer to be a lot more safer for your application, for yourself, and for your customers. So some resources, on that note, I have one minute. Feel free to send me an email, feel free to uh, ping me in the coffee break, to ask questions. Uh, I'm going to be there all day, all weekend. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any issues, ping me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, go on Immunio if you want to test uh, RASP, uh, real-time uh, security for your web application, uh, if you're using Python, of course, but also if you have any Ruby or Java application. And I'm going to put the slides and on uh, outofcomfortzone.net my blog in uh, French, English, most of the time in French. <laughs> so on that note, uh, I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned some stuff or you're gonna go out and think about security and have a good PyCon.